welcome to um, this channel where we discuss some disorders and uh, diseases uh, of some pathways and we look at some uh, molecular basis of uh, some of these uh, disorders. Today we want to look at the glycolytic pathway uh, defect and we are looking at uh, a typical example of that that we'll find, always find at the uh, glycolytic pathway. Uh, we have what we call the pyruvic kinase deficiency, PKD. Uh, it's actually a rare genetic disorder, uh, which most of the time results in premature destruction of the red blood cells. And uh, this uh, is actually called the hemolytic anemia. Okay. How does this hemolytic anemia, how does it come to play in the pathway? You know, in the glycolytic pathway, we have the glucose uh, here, and the glu glucose is being uh, converted to glucose phosphate. And through a series of uh, reactions, uh, glucose phosphate gets to phosphoenopyruvate, and uh, phosphoenopyruvate is being converted to pyruvate. Now, to do this, uh, there is a gene referred to as the PKLR gene. The PKLR gene is actually responsible for the expression of what we call the pyruvate kinase, which is an enzyme. And this pyruvate kinase actually helps to convert phosphoenopyruvate uh, to pyruvate. And then at this point, some few ATP have been released from the glycolytic pathway. And you know that this pyruvate also through uh, several uh, pathways also uh, leads to production of uh, more ATPs. These ATPs are actually needed by the red blood cells uh, for normal functioning of the red blood cells uh, because red blood cells are needed in the body to move uh, some vital uh, substances from the body. We have the oxygen and some other things that the red blood cells are responsible with. And so with the help of ATP, they remain normal and they are able to move around. But whenever we have um, a variation or a mutation in the PKLR gene, uh, this results uh, in what we call the pyruvine kinase uh, deficiency. And definitely, we might not have enough ATP available for the red blood cells. So the red blood cells, uh, instead of taking an average uh, days of 420 days uh, before the red blood cells uh, they go off the system and new ones are, the, are being produced. Uh, the red blood cell will just last for a few days uh, and sometimes for a few weeks uh, they will get uh, destroyed uh, prematurely. And this uh, is now what we lead to what we call the hemolytic anemia. This kind of disorder uh, is actually inherited in an autosomal uh, recessive. Manner. Although the severity of this disorder varies uh, from one point to the other, we have a situation where in, the symptoms might be mild, while in some other it might actually uh, be severe. And then there are other means in which this can also be managed. Thank you very much uh, for joining me for this video. I uh, want you to subscribe to this channel as more videos will be coming out where we look at some molecular basis of some of these pathways, uh, which will also stimulate us on how to actually address or carry out one or two research in addressing uh, some of this disorder. Thank you very much.